Okay, see Lindelof videos. Solving logarithmic equations, part one. Look, this is not as difficult. This kind of looks like crap here, and I know that it does. But this is not as difficult as it looks. What we have to do is figure out what it is that we have to do, kind of the steps that we want to use. So here in yellow, this says 2 log base 7 of negative 2r. The first thing I'm going to do, it's called the argument, is I'm going to define the argument. So this one, this is actually from CUDA software, and I think they wrote it this way on purpose. But see this negative 2r here? This is actually the argument. This is part of this thing that you see in white. And our job is to isolate that thing so we can use other rules. So what I'm going to do first is see this yellow 2? It's a coefficient of this. So my goal is to get this white piece all by itself. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to divide both sides by 2. Just so you know, I'm going to be doing three examples today. I'm going to try to keep it under 5 minutes. So I'm going to keep moving. <clears throat> so 2 divided by 2 is 1, and 1 times log base 7 of negative 2r is log base 7 of 2r. So I got rid of the coefficient here, negative 2r, right? And 0 divided by 2 is 0. That is defined and makes sense. From here, the second thing that we're going to try to do is we're going to exponentiate. Step one, isolate this thing, isolate the log. Second thing is exponentiate. So what we know about logarithmic functions is they can be turned into exponential functions. So what I'm going to do is it's this base to this power is equal to this thing. So that's what I'm going to do. 7 to the 0 power, 7 to the 0 power is equal to negative 2 R. Yes? Okay. From here, I'm just going to solve some stuff. We know that a to the 0 power is equal to 1, such that a is not equal to 0. And I've done tons of videos on this. But in a general way, if you see something raised to the 0 power, its value is actually 1. I gotta hate to say it again, but as long as a is not zero. So here it is. So seven is not zero, so seven to the zero power is one. So one equals negative two r. Of course now the goal here is to get this r by itself. So we're gonna divide both sides by negative two, divide by negative two. Negative two over negative two is one, which leaves us with r. R equals negative one over two. Keeping in mind that 1 over negative 2 is the same as negative 1 over 2, or the way I wrote it, it's all the same answer. Okay, let's move on to another example. I'm trying to move as quickly as I can so you can kind of get how this works. So here's the next one. You can see I wrote in yellow again this negative 10. On the CUDA software problem, it wasn't written this way, obviously, but I'm trying to demonstrate to you that this is the thing we have to get rid of because what we want is the argument, this thing, this logarithmic thing by itself. So I'm going to add 10 to both sides. And in this case, it works out in a very similar way to the way it did last time. So 10 minus 10 is 0, so equals 0. And we get log base 3 of n plus 3. Yes? Oops, sorry. What's the second step? The second step is to exponentiate. This 3 to this power is equal to this thing. So this 3, sorry, this 3 is this, this 3 is this 3, and this 0 is the power. So 3, this 3 to the 0 power is equal to n plus 3. We talked about this before. Any number other than 0 to the 0 power is equal to 1. So I'm going to go ahead and simplify this. So 3 to the 0 power is 1 n plus plus 3. We're solving for n, so I'm going to take away 3 from both sides, so we get 1 minus 3 is equal to n. I'm going to simplify again. 1 minus 3 is negative 2. Negative 2 equals n, and reflexively, obviously, n equals negative 2. Remember, you can stop anywhere along this video and rewind. I know I'm moving fast, but I'm trying to cover as much ground as I can without um, spending too much time on the video because you will only watch so, so much of it. Here, here, this is again CUDA software and they put log, and this is the common log, common log negative m. Look, this is what they're not telling you and what they're not telling you is this, that this negative m is the argument. It has to be the argument because log by itself makes no sense. If it was going to be, if the argument was going to be negative m plus 2, they would have had to provide parentheses here and here, okay? 
So you can see the negative 2 is what we're trying to get rid of first. I'm sorry, the 2 is what we're going to try to get rid of first, which is minus 2, minus 2. So the log, and look, if you see a log value, you say, oh my god, there's no base value. If you don't see a base value, this is called the common log, you can assume that there is actually a 10 here. So there's a 10 here, right? Remember, I subtracted 2 from both sides is equal to 4. Oh, that's not true. Is equal to, oops, God. Look, I, I was going to start over, but I'm not going to. I'm just going to keep moving here. Right? So negative m is equal to 2. What next? Exponentiate. 10 to this power is equal to this thing. That gives us 10 squared. So 10 squared equals negative m. Sorry, I wrote in yellow there. But so I'm going to go ahead and square 10. 10 squared is 100. 100 equals negative m. And I'm, right, this is a negative 1 here negative 1 here, negative 1 here, right? So this is how I'm going to get rid of this negative on this side. m equals negative 100. I know we rushed through this because I wanted to give you as many examples as possible. I hope this is helpful. If you have any questions or comments, please let me know. And if you haven't already subscribed, please do. See ya!